welcome dear participants hope you are enjoying the lectures in this five week national workshop on statistical analysis of biological data we are here again back with another very interesting and basic and important topic in biostatistics that is graphical and diagrammatic representation of data this is an important aspect as when you have data with you then you must know how to classify it and how to represent your data graphically or diagrammatically to make it more effective and we have two speakers for this lecture today and it is my indeed a privilege to introduce the two speakers for today's talk we have dr atika chandra with us dr atika chandra is presently working as associate professor in metri college delhi university she did her graduation post graduation and phd from delhi university and her area of specialization is genetics she did her post doctoral at department of genetics south campus delhi university she was recipient of fast track young scientist fellowship from department of science and technology government of india for her post doctoral research she has also co guided a phd research scholar and she is a dedicated teacher and a research scholar par excellence welcome dr atika chandra the second speaker for today is dr shweta sharma who is currently assistant professor in metri college delhi university she did her doctoral research from department of plant molecular biology delhi university south campus her area of research was rna i mediated resistance in different rice varieties she did her post graduation and graduation from delhi university she teaches as a teacher her subjects are biostatistics plant physiology and metabolism and industrial and environmental microbiology to name a few it is we welcome you dr shweta to this workshop so now i would like you to enjoy the today's lecture on this important and basic topic on the biostatistics thank you warm welcome to all the participants in five week long national workshop on statistical analysis of biological data this is organized by department of botany zakir hussain delhi college myself dr shweta sharma assistant professor department of botany metri college i welcome our participants in this module which is on representation of data my name is dr atika chandra associate professor department of botany metri college university of delhi i also extend a very warm welcome to all the learners in this module on representation of data this module has been distributed into three parts the current video is part 1 where we are presenting a brief introduction discussing the importance of data visualization and summarization of data the second part deals with the diagrammatic representation while the third part is focusing on graphical representations next next to begin with we are all aware that experiments in biology are capturing information by various methods and techniques it is generating data in many different formats we can thus visualize that each type of data will need to be presented and analyzed in different ways in the current scenario data analytics biomathematics big data all are uh, big buzzwords however we are all aware that as biologists the challenges of uh, numeric competency in biology students is very low we have found teaching this paper on biostatistics very challenging and rewarding endeavor we have constantly learned from our students and encouraged and evolved pedagogical structures to involve them the most hesitant of the learners to develop numeric competencies in contemporary biological research 
having a sound statistical aptitude can go a long way in designing successful uh, experiments and reporting novel outcomes and discoveries from research observations. Next. It is therefore important that presenting information should be able to communicate outcomes effectively. It should be able to expose the subtleties in the data that are less apparent in numerical form and also help us to derive conclusions. Next. Visual representation of data has a number of advantages. It relieves the dullness of the numerical data and gives a visual appeal to the data to the viewer. It allows easy comparison of the data sets. It is efficient as it saves time and effort. It facilitates the location of various statistical measures and also helps to establish trends as in whether the data is increasing or decreasing. It has universal applicability and it also is an integral part of communicating your research work. Statistical analysis starts with raw data. In the beginning, we just have a random set of numbers that we, ha we have obtained as a result of our observation. This random set of numbers is called as the data points. So uh, data points of the raw data. So raw data has a number of data points, but it is not useful for assimilating any information for the reader. It is also not useful for arriving at any conclusions. So we all have to follow certain steps in analyzing the raw data. The first step is to summarize the data. This involves arranging data in a certain order or in groups. Second step is to conduct exploratory analysis that includes calculations of various statistical measures involved in descriptive statistics. Third step is to visualize the data in the form of diagrams or graphs. Fourth step is to propose hypothesis based on your problem statement. Fifth step include various confirmatory analysis based on your hypothesis like significance testing, correlations or regression calculations. And finally, depending upon the result obtained, inferences can be drawn. This can be followed by advanced visualization of the results such as heat maps. In statistical analysis, the data collected as raw data may not be suitable to draw inferences. It is therefore essential to summarize the raw data into a frequency table. The purpose of frequency distribution table is to organize the data into a compact form. This can be achieved by grouping the data into small number of classes or groups. Thus, a frequency distribution is a table that organizes data into classes this is followed by recording the number of observations that is frequency falling in each category. The frequency distributions are thus visual displays that organizes and presents the frequency counts so that the information can be interpreted more easily. A very easy method to prepare the frequency distribution table is by tally counting method. We will be discussing this method in detail in the part three of our module. Not only this, frequency distributions can also help us to show the absolute frequencies or relative frequencies or even cumulative frequencies. We end the part one of our module here. We hope to meet you all in part two and part three of our module on representation of data. Thank you. Thank you.